So in this video, I want to talk about how DNA works, what it's made of, and how those components help contribute to its function of coding for proteins. And before I do that, I want to give you a sense of the, the this is kind of the first video to start molecular genetics. And so I want to give you a sense of how we think about how DNA contributes to genes um, and ultimately the traits that we observe. So we're going to see that the genes are ultimately sections of DNA code. That code can be copied, and we'll call that copy RNA very soon. RNAs will actually be the instructions that are read in order to construct a protein correctly. And then maybe that, protein's worker, that, that protein worker's activity will ultimately influence the trait that we see. And so alterations in this information flow um, at any point could lead to um, an alteration of the traits that we see. And since DNA is passed from parents to children, that's how um, uh, uh, maybe me, uh, different traits might be passed from generation to generation. And so just a very uh, famous example of how this model has helped us understand this better is the genetic disorder sickle cell anemia. Most people have red blood cells that look like this, uh, but people who have sickle cell anemia maybe inherited a different set of DNA code from their parents that caused their uh, red blood cells to look like this. Um, and we've actually traced that uh, uh, tiny little DNA change to a change in the RNA, which changes the protein a little bit that makes up these cells. And that leads to these um, mal-shaped red blood cells that ultimately cause um, clogs in blood vessels that can cause um, episodes of sharp pain and fatigue. Um, I don't want you to memorize sickle cell anemia, but I just want to give you a quick example of how we've sort of pieced all of this together to build a basic understanding of how DNA code can lead to traits. And so let's study that DNA a little bit more in detail. Some of this I went over in an earlier unit, but just as a quick review, DNA um, overall has the shape of a double helix. A helix is like a corkscrew. And so there are two strands twisting around each other in that characteristic famous shape. If we were to zoom in more um, into what the DNA was made of, we kind of studied this a little bit before too. The basic repeating unit is called a nucleotide, and a nucleotide has three basic pieces to it. So we called those pieces a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. Uh, the phosphate and the sugars are just repeated in sometimes what we call the backbone, which I would call all of this part right here. And the backbone is really just there to hold the whole strand together. Uh, so sugars and phosphates are really just holding everything together but not serving a coding function. It's the nitrogen bases in the middle, though, that are really the coding pieces. And so um, th that's what we're going to spend a lot more time talking about now. Um, in DNA, there are four different types of nitrogen bases. So nitrogen base is kind of the, the general category, and there are four types, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Definitely don't have to memorize the spelling of all these because we almost always just refer to them by their first letter. Um, I'm showing you the chemical structure just ever so briefly. You definitely do not need to memorize these either. Um, but I just want you to see that they are actual chemicals made of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, things like that. Um, and, uh, but we're just going to use the, the first letters as a very convenient way to represent them. So I'm just trying to make sure you're not thinking that there's actually little A's, T's, C's, and G's like deep inside of our cells. That's not true. Um, and I also made these little cartoon um, kind of depictions of these chemicals so that you could kind of see that um, uh, certain nitrogen bases pair up with other nitrogen bases. Adenine has a shape so that it fits very nicely with thymine, and guanine has a shape so that it fits very nicely with cytosine. So these nitrogen bases don't actually pair up with themselves. Adenine does not pair up with another adenine. It pairs up with a thymine. Um, maybe a very kind of simple way to remember which uh, nitrogen pa base pairs up with which is the only two-letter word I can think that you can spell is at. Um, so that means A goes with T, and that means C has to go with G. Um, sometimes kind of these rounded letters kind of fit with each other too, and so that's another way of trying to remember uh, which one goes with which. 
And so that's going to be helpful because if I give you a strand of code, let's say that one particular strand of DNA has these nitrogen bases in this sequence, we can predict what the other strand would have. Uh, T again pairs with A, A pairs with T, C pairs with G, which I'll do twice, G pairs with C, C pairs with G, and I can just kind of keep going here to finish it. So if I know one side, I know what the other side is because there are very characteristic nitrogen bases that pair with each other. And the other thing that I'll just briefly bring up is that in between these guys, there is um, uh, uh, very weak bonds called hydrogen bonds. And so hydrogen bonds are the perfect types of bonds to go in between uh, the, the nitrogen bases of different strands because it's strong enough to hold the double helix together when we want it to be closed, but it's very easy to break hydrogen bonds as well in order to open the code up. And we're gonna see that we do that anytime we wanna access the nitrogen bases and read them. And so let me just finish then by giving you a very quick overview of how DNA actually serves as a code. Um, we're gonna be doing this in future videos kind of step by step. Um, but for very briefly, as it turns out, we want to break those hydrogen bonds and open up the code because maybe one of the strands is the actual gene. Um, a gene is just nothing more than a sequence of nitrogen bases that we want to read and copy in order to build a particular protein. And so we're going to see later that the DNA can be copied into an RNA copy. RNA is mostly the same nitrogen bases with one difference, as we'll see later. And then that RNA can be read in groups of three letters. That's why I put the white line here. And those three letters lead to an amino acid. And different groups of nitrogen bases lead to different amino acids. That's why it's really important that we have the right sequence in the right order. And so again, please do not feel like you need to write all this down. We're gonna go through the steps of how you do all of this in future videos. All I really care about right now is just the idea that the sequence of nitrogen bases really matters because it's that sequence that will ultimately lead to the correct protein, which when it does its job will lead to a certain trait. So hopefully in this video, we just kind of gave you a really quick introduction to DNA, the components that make it up, the sugar phosphate backbone, and the nitrogen bases. And it's the nitrogen bases that serve as the code for proteins. And they pair up between uh, the two strands in very characteristic ways, making hydrogen bonds in between, and that it's ultimately the sequence of those bases that serve as the code.